how to make a WG dashboard server for WireGuard VPN on DigitalOcean. In this video, I'll take you step by step through the process of installing WG dashboard or WireGuard dashboard on a DigitalOcean droplet. We will use the WG dashboard marketplace app available for one click install on DigitalOcean's marketplace. WG dashboard is an excellent web UI WireGuard VPN management tool. Once WireGuard dashboard has been installed on our droplet, we'll then install the WireGuard client on our operating system of choice. Following this, we'll log into our WireGuard dashboard, create a peer or a user, and then add that WireGuard configuration details to our WireGuard client, connect, and then check our IP address using the tool whatismyipaddress.com to see if our WireGuard VPN is working correctly. Okay, so let's begin by installing WG dashboard on DigitalOcean. Open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link to DigitalOcean. It will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so that you can click on it for your convenience. To sign up as a new user, you can either do that with email, your GitHub account, or your Google account. Now, I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on Sign In. Once you've signed up to DigitalOcean and signed in, you'll be taken to your DigitalOcean control panel. At the top right, look for the green Create button and click on it. Once you've done that, click on Droplets, which is what DigitalOcean calls its cloud servers, or Virtual Private Servers, VPSs. You'll now be on the Droplet Creation page. Here, you'll need to choose a region for your droplet. The region that you choose will be the country that the WireGuard VPN masks your original IP address to. So as you can see, DigitalOcean offers a number of regions. I'm going to go with Singapore for this video, so I'm going to click on Singapore to select that region. Scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. By default, the OS tab will be selected. You want to click on Marketplace. Once you've done that, you'll see a search box. Click on the search box and then enter the following keyword, WGD, which should bring up WG Dashboard, a simple web UI for managing WireGuard. Click on WG Dashboard to select it. As you can see, WG Dashboard is now selected and it will install WG on the Ubuntu OS. Now, if you're having difficulty locating WG Dashboard in the search box here, what you can do is navigate to the actual WG Dashboard in DigitalOcean's marketplace and then simply click on Create WG Dashboard Droplet and it'll take you to this droplet creation page where the WG WG Dashboard app will already be selected for you. I'll put the link to the WG Dashboard app in DigitalOcean's Marketplace in the video description below. Once you've selected WG Dashboard, scroll down until you see where it says Choose Size. The droplet type Shared CPU should be pre-selected for you. If it isn't, you can click on it to select it. The dedicated CPU options are not really necessary for someone just making a VPN for themselves and maybe a few family members or friends. Scroll down a bit more until you see where it says CPU Options. You have the regular CPU option, which comes with a disk type of SSD or the two premium options for Intel or AMD which come with NVMe SSDs. Again, you can roll with the regular type as that's cheaper and should be enough for your WireGuard VPN. However, if you need more power, you can select the premium options. Below, you need to select the plan. If you're just making a WireGuard VPN for yourself, then the $6 a month plan with one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabytes SSD disk space, and a terabyte of bandwidth should be more than enough. This plan should be enough to support you and a couple of friends and family members. If you're setting up WG Dashboard to manage the WireGuard VPN for many users, then you can go with a 2GB plan or a larger plan. For this video demonstration, I'm going to roll with the 1GB plan. Once you've selected your plan, scroll down until you see where it says Choose Authentication Method. Click on Password if it already isn't pre-selected, and then you'll need to create a root password for your droplet. Make sure your password meets the password requirements below. So I'm just going to enter in a password now. Once you've chosen a password, scroll down until you see where it says Advanced Options. Click on Advanced Options and check mark the box here that says Enable IPv6 Free. This enables public IPv6 networking on your DigitalOcean droplet. Now currently, WG Dashboard doesn't actually utilize IPv6, it only uses IPv4. WG Dashboard may in future decide to support this for the WireGuard VPN. It's just a way of future proofing your droplet. Scroll down a bit more until you see where it says Hostname. Here you'll need to give your droplet an identifier name. So I'm going to click on this box here and delete the pre-tagged information in here and I'm going to call my droplet WGD which stands for WG Dashboard. Once you've chosen a name, click on Create Droplet. DigitalOcean will then begin installing WG Dashboard on your droplet. I'll be back with you guys once the progress bar reaches to the end. Alright, I'm back and as you can see, WG Dashboard has now been installed on our DigitalOcean droplet and you can see that our droplet is active, indicated by the green status symbol here. Digital 
Ocean provides a getting started guide for WG Dashboard. You can click on this if you want, or if you want to follow along in the video, just continue watching. Now WG Dashboard takes around five minutes to be fully set up and running on your digital ocean droplet. So while that's setting up, we can install the WireGuard client. Open up another tab in your browser and navigate to the following URL address, wireguard.com. Once you're here, click on installation at the very top. You'll then see a bunch of operating systems available to install the WireGuard client on. You've got Windows at the very top here, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Android, iOS, Debian, and so on and so forth. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be downloading the Windows installer. So I'm going to click on download Windows installer. It's a fairly lightweight file, so it should be downloaded rather quickly. Now I'm on Google Chrome, so I'm going to navigate to the top right hand corner to the downloads icon, and I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on wireguard-installer.exe. If you're on Windows like myself, you'll be greeted with the user account control, which asks you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have the option to click on no or yes. I'm going to click on yes, as I want to continue with the WireGuard client installation. Once WireGuard has been installed, it will automatically open up. For now, I'm going to minimize the WireGuard client as we first need to set up WG Dashboard. Go back to your Digital Ocean Control Panel tab and then locate your droplet's IP address, which for me is right here, 178.128.58.115. This IP address will be unique to you depending on the region you selected. Just click on the text that says copy to copy it. Next, open up a fresh tab in your browser and at the top of the address bar, type the following, HTTP, not HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, and then right click and paste in your IP address of your droplet followed by colon 10086. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. Once you've done that, you'll be taken to your WireGuard dashboard web UI. Here you'll need to sign into your admin account. Now for everybody, the WG dashboard admin account username will be admin. This will be the same for everybody initially and the password will also be admin. So the username is admin and the password is admin. Once you type this in, click on sign in. Now you'll need to create an account and that account will actually be your admin account. So instead of signing in with admin admin to WG dashboard in the future, you'll sign in with the username that you choose now and the password that you choose now. So the username that I'm going to enter in here is Websplaining and my password, well, I'm not gonna tell you that, but I'm just going to type that in right here, and then I'm going to repeat it right here. Once you've done that, click on next. WireGuard dashboard will then ask you to set up multi-factor authentication or MFA. You can set this up if you want, but for this video demonstration, I'm going to click on, I don't need MFA. And there we go, we are now signed into our WireGuard dashboard. And you can see we've got one WireGuard configuration and that's WG0. It's currently off and that's because we haven't added any peers yet or users. First, before we begin adding peers, let's just sign out of WG Dashboard by clicking on sign out and test the new login credentials that we created. So I'm just going to type admin and then admin in here and then I'm going to click on sign in and you can see that doesn't work anymore. So now you need to enter the actual details that you created for your admin account. In my case the username is going to be websplaining and then I'm going to type in my password and then I'm going to click on sign in. The admin account that we created works without any issues. Again, locate WG0 and click on it. Once you've done that, click on the plus symbol next to peer to add a user. At the very top here, you can add bulk users if you want, but I'm just going to add one or two right now for this video demonstration. So in here, we need to choose the name. So I'm going to go with John. Once you've chosen a name, just click on add at the bottom right hand corner here. And as you can see, the peer was successfully created. And if we scroll down, you can see that's the case right here. You can see we've got connected peers zero out of one, and you can see the status of WG0 is now green, which means it is in fact now on. Let's add another pair. So I'm going to click on add pair here. And then you just repeat the process for the next pair. So let's go with Mark as the next user and then just click on add. And as you can see, connected pairs is zero out of two, which means the second pair was successfully created. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got Mark and we've got John. So you can add as many pairs as you want in the WG dashboard. Now I'm going to be connecting as John. So find the pair at the bottom here that you want to connect to and then click on the three horizontal dots. Scroll down a little and then at the top here, you have the option to download the WireGuard configuration file or .conf file. You'll then import that downloaded configuration file into your WireGuard client. If you're on mobile, you have the option to scan the QR code. So if I click on the QR code symbol here, it will show the QR code that you can scan with your mobile device to import the WireGuard VPN configuration information. I'm just going to close this QR code now as I'm on a desktop. 
I'm going to click on the three horizontal dots again. I'm going to scroll down a little. And then the next option is the configuration file information. So if I click on this, you can then see all the peer configuration file information right here. And I'm going to be using this as it's by far the simplest to connect to on your desktop. So to copy this information, interface and peer, all you need to do is click on the copy symbol here at the bottom right hand corner and you'll highlight and copy all of this information. Next, what I'm going to do is open up my WireGuard client and at the bottom left hand corner next to add tunnel, I'm going to click on the arrow here and then I'm going to click on add empty tunnel. I'm going to delete the pre-typed information in here and I'm going to right click and click on paste to paste in the config info that I copied from WG dashboard. At the very top, we'll need to choose a name. So I'm going to roll with John and then all that's left to do is click on save. And as you can see, the WireGuard VPN config info has been added to your WireGuard client. To turn on your VPN, all you need to do is click on activate. And there we go. We are now connected to our WireGuard VPN. Let's check our IP address now. So I'm just going to minimize the client and then I'm going to go to my other tab. You're going to open up another tab and navigate to whatismyipaddress.com. Once done, hit enter on your keyboard and then you should see your new masked IP address, which as you can see in my case is 178.128.58.115. IPv6 is not detected despite turning it on. WG dashboard doesn't actually utilize it at the moment, but that's fine. IPv4 is what the majority of the internet currently uses. You can see our location is in Singapore, which is the same region that we selected for our droplet. So you can check the IP address here and it should exactly match the IP address of your digital ocean droplet, which means WireGuard VPN is working correctly. That pretty much concludes the video. However, before I end it, I just want to go back to my WG dashboard just to show you how the dashboard looks like when a peer or a user has actually connected. So as you can see, you can see the total received data and the total sent data for all your clients, total usage, the number of connected peers, which we talked about earlier. You can see real-time graphical data of your peers. And again, you can see who's connected and who's not connected at any given time on your WireGuard dashboard. So it's a great way to manage peers through a visual web UI. Just remember to give your peers the WireGuard VPN config info. It'll be unique to them. So you can just click on the three horizontal dots and then give them one of these ways of connecting through their WireGuard client. Further down, you have options for peer settings, schedule jobs, you can restrict access, and you can even delete the WireGuard config information for that client if you no longer want them to use your WireGuard VPN. You have even further options at the very top here for configuration settings, and you have your WG dashboard settings on the top left side. Okay, so that concludes the video on how to make a WG dashboard server for WireGuard VPN on DigitalOcean. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so hard to let you go?